These carburetors are off of my 1985 Yamaha FJ600 and I'll be showing you how to disassemble, clean, and reassemble them. Before you do anything, it's a good idea to make a diagram like this on a piece of cardboard so you can put the screws in it and the parts so you can remember where they go. After removing the carburetors from your bike, you want to start by unscrewing the screws on the float chambers, these, and putting the screws in their respective spot on your diagram. Once the screws are unscrewed on the float chamber, you can lift it right off like this, take the screws out, and put them on the diagram like this. And this is what you should have now. Um, all of the float chambers and screws will be on your diagram so you know where they go when you put them back together. And the cards will be missing the float chambers. Sometimes the gaskets stick to the carbs, sometimes they stick to the float chambers. On mine, they are on the float chambers still and not on the carbs but you want to make sure you get all traces of gasket off. The reason I'm not taking them off is because I just replaced them. The next step is to remove the float pins which are located right here. To do this, sometimes they get stuck, so I normally take a Phillips screwdriver and line it up on the pin and tap it lightly to get it to come out, and then grab it the rest of the way with a needle nose plier to pull it out. Make sure to put these on your cardboard diagram so you don't lose them and you know where they go. Now that you've completed removing the pins and they're on your diagram, you want to move back to the carbs and start removing the floats and needles. Needle valve, sorry. To do this, simply lift the float up. And unhook the needle valve. They should come into two pieces and then put them on your diagram. Next step is to remove the screw and the retainer for the needle valve seat. Simply unscrew and pull them out and place it on your diagram. It is to remove the needle valve seats. To do this, all you need to do is lift up on them and they should pop right out. If they don't, you can use a needle nose plier to remove them if they're stuck. The typical type of debris that can be found on these can look like this. see it right there on the screen. Once you remove the needle valve seats, you can take a pick like this, and there's little notches on the screens, and you want to pop those screens off like this.
When you're done that, place it on your diagram. So now at this point, your diagram should consist of all of this, which is the float chambers, the float chamber screws, your floats, your float pins, your float needle valve, and the seat and its retainer. The next step is to unscrew the main jet and lift it out with its washer. This is the main jet. To do this, you'll need a flathead screwdriver and simply unscrew them. Like so. Sometimes the washers stick, so you can take your pick and pull that washer right out. And then place this on your diagram. The next step is to remove the pilot jets, which are located right in front of the main jet right here. To do that you're going to need to get in there with a small flathead screwdriver and once they are unscrewed you can use your pick to get in there and pull it right out. Place it on your diagram so you don't lose it. Next step is to flip your carburetors over and make a diagram for the top, like so. The next step is to remove the vacuum chamber cover screws, the vacuum chamber covers, and the springs under the covers. And you'll want to place them on the respective parts on your diagram. You'll want to put some pressure on the cover when removing the last screw so the spring and cover don't go flying. And it should look like this. Be sure to remove the brackets with the screws and place it like this on your diagram so you know exactly which way it goes when you put it back on. Your diagram should now look like this with the screws, covers, and springs and brackets on it. And your carburetor should look like this, ready to remove the diaphragms. So the next step is to remove the diaphragms. And you want to do this very carefully so you don't rip the diaphragm because if you do it will create vacuum problems in the future. So what I do is I run my finger around it like this till it's peeled up and then gently pull it away and when you put them on your diagram you want to place them face down and kind of push the diaphragm the opposite way so it's resting on the plastic part and not the diaphragm itself. Again, you want to be very careful when doing this and not tear the diaphragms. So your carburetor should look like this now. Step is to remove the screws in the throttle piston.
You want to be careful again. There's a spring inside here under the plate. should look like this on the inside and once the screws are unscrewed carefully dump it all out into your hand you should have the plate two screws and the spring the next part is to Oh, that fell right out. Take out the um, jet needle, and there's three components on it. This little plastic piece that sticks into the piston, and there's a C-clip on it. To remove the C-clip, I usually just take both of my fingers and pop it right off. and then you can slide the plastic retainer off. So you should have the needle, plastic retainer, the C-clip, the plate, the two screws, and the spring. And you want to place that along with the piston back onto your diagram. That, your diagram should look like this. Now the next step is to push the needle jet into the throttle bore. To do this, you're going to want to flip your carbs over again. And the needle jets are located right here. There's four of them on mine. To do that, you can take a screwdriver. I usually use a Phillips because it fits out better and you should be able to just push these right through. If they give you some trouble, you can lightly tap on it to get it to come through. Inside the throttle bore, it should look like this. And what you're going to want to do is just pull that through the rest of the way or stick something in there to push it out, and they should come right out. 